Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Hey fellow Redditors, gather round and get ready for a wild tale that unfolded right before my eyes. You won't believe the audacity of this woman I like to call Karen, of course, for anonymity purposes. So grab your popcorn, sit back and let me spin a story that could easily fit into the infamous r slash entitled people subreddit. Now let me start from the beginning where things took a hilariously unexpected turn. Imagine a sunny day at the local park with families frolicking around, kids laughing and dogs joyfully chasing bulls. Ah, the perfect setting for some good old relaxation, right? I was there soaking in the sunshine when I noticed a frazzled looking woman with a cute little dog. Let's call her Lisa. She had a worn out expression and her child, let's call him Timmy, was coughing uncontrollably. It was evident that Timmy wasn't feeling well. Poor kid. Being the friendly and compassionate person I am, I approached Lisa and struck up a conversation. Turns out her little pooch, Baxter, was more than just a bet. He was a certified support dog, trained to provide emotional comfort and stability for Timmy, who suffered from anxiety and severe allergies. Baxter was an absolute superhero in dog form. Now enter our villain, the infamous Karen. She came barging in like a bull in a china shop, huffing and puffing. She didn't waste a moment to interrupt our conversation, making it clear that she had a bone to pick, or in this case, a dog to snatch. Excuse me, but that dog is too cute to be just a bit. I demand you give it to me. I demand you give it to me. Lisa and I exchanged incredulous glances, not sure how to react to this bizarre request. Lisa says, um, excuse me, Baxter is not just a bet. He's a certified support dog for my son's health conditions. Karen scoffed, clearly not interested in hearing Lisa's explanation. I don't care, my little Timmy. Yes, she had a Timmy too. Needs a cute dog like Baxter to cheer him up. Lisa, understandably frustrated, tried to reason with Karen, explaining how important Baxter was for Timmy's well-being. I'm sorry, but Baxter is specifically trained to assist my son. I can't just give him away. Plus, he's family to us. Karen's face turned a bright shade of red and I had to resist the urge to burst into laughter. This woman was relentless. You don't understand. My Timmy needs Baxter more than your Timmy does. Hand him over now. Now at this point, I was ready to whip out my popcorn and watch the show unfold. But before things could escalate further, a park guard approached us. Talk about perfect timing. He says, ladies, is there a problem here? Karen immediately seized the opportunity to play the victim. Oh, thank goodness you're here. These people are refusing to give me their dog. It's an outrage. The guard, a wise man, listened to both sides of the story attentively. After hearing Lisa's explanation and even having a quick chat with little Timmy, he saw right through Karen's entitlement. He says, Ma'am, it's clear that Baxter is a trained support dog and is essential for Timmy's well-being. You cannot forcefully demand someone's assistant animal. Karen's eyes bulged with anger and she lost her temper, spewing a series of insults that would make a sailor blush. But no amount of verbal attacks could sway the security guard's decision. That's enough, ma'am. If you continue this behavior, I'll have no choice but to call the authorities. Lo and behold, Karen's bluff was cold, and she begrudgingly stomped away, muttering obscenities under her press. It was both satisfying and hilarious to see her plans unravel before her eyes. But wait, there is more. After Karen stormed away from Lisa and me, Still fuming with entitlement, she wandered around the park like a thundercloud ready to burst. It wasn't long before her temper got the better of her yet again, and she found herself in a heated argument with an elderly couple who were peacefully enjoying a picnic. Now this couple, let's call him Mr. Now this couple, let's call him Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, were the epitome of sweetness and tranquility. 
They were simply minding their own business when Karen decided to unload her fury upon them. How dare you sit here? This is my spot. Move. Mr. Thompson, with a twinkle in his eye, calmly responded, Oh, my apologies, ma'am. We didn't realize spots in the park had owners. We'll gladly move if you can show us your name engraved on a grass. His gentle sarcasm only fueled Karen's rage. She launched into a tirade, berating the poor couple for their audacity to exist in the same vicinity as her. It was at this point that park security was alerted to the disturbance, and they hurriedly made their way to the scene. Karen, still seizing with entitlement, refused to back down, even in the face of security. She continued to unleash a barrage of insults, believing she was untouchable. However, she severely underestimated the power of the park security team. The head of security, a burly but good-natured man, approached Karen with a stern yet calm demeanor. Ma'am, we've received multiple complaints about your disruptive behavior. It seems you've caused quite a commotion today. Karen, ever the drama queen, scoffed and replied, Oh please, these people are just jealous of my presence. I demand you release me immediately. I'm afraid that won't be happening, ma'am. You've been verbally abusive and disruptive, which is a violation of park rules. I am going to have to ask you to come with me until the police arrive. The smugness on Karen's face vanished like a soap bubble popping. She realized she had pushed the boundaries too far this time, and her entitlement was about to land her in hot water. As the security head attempted to escort Karen away, she refused to comply, digging her heels into the ground like an immovable rock. Her face twisted with rage, and she decided to take matters into her own hands. With a shrill scream, she charged towards the security head. Fists clinched and eyes ablaze. The security head, caught off guard by Karen's sudden burst of aggression, took a step back, raising his arms in a defensive stance. But fear not, my friends, for the security team was well prepared for such situations. Before Karen could reach the security head, his partner, a quick-thinking officer armed with a taser, swiftly stepped in. With lightning speed, he activated the device and aimed it at Karen, releasing a bolt of electricity that coursed through her body. Zap! Karen's enraged charge was abruptly halted as the electric shock temporarily incapacitated her. She froze in place, her limbs twitching like a malfunctioning robot. It was like witnessing a real-life episode of Dance Dance Revolution gone horribly wrong. As Karen effectively neutralized, the security head wasted no time in handcuffing her while she regained her senses. It was a surreal sight, watching the epitome of entitlement rendered helpless and defeated. The onlookers, a mix of amusement and relief, couldn't help but cheer for the security team's swift response. Karen's attempt to defy authority had backfired spectacularly, leaving her humiliated and facing the consequences of her outrageous behavior. And so, my fellow Redditors, Karen Steele takes yet another unexpected turn as she arrives in discomfort. The taste of her own entitlement no doubt better in her mouth, and the police arrived shortly after, and their arrival marking the end of Karen's reign of entitlement. As they led her away, her protests and demands for special treatment fell on deaf ears. The park had been restored to peace and justice had prevailed once again. Karen, who once believed she was untouchable, had met her match in the form of a security team dedicated to maintaining order and ensuring the safety and enjoyment of park visitors. So let this be a reminder to all those who think they can travel over the rights and well-being of others in the pursuit of their own desires. Karma has a way of catching up with you, and entitled tantrums rarely end in victory. So yeah, dear listeners, may your own encounters with entitlement be nothing short of entertaining and most importantly, devoid of tasers. For anyone who read my previous stories from my time at the theater, I have another one. This time it involves the owner's daughter. This woman was something else. She was somewhere in her mid to late 40s, about 80 pounds, soaking wet. 
and the tangled mess of brown frizzy hair. She was also one of the most insufferable individuals I ever met in my life. So naturally, her father decided to give her a job at the theater. The staff was not happy to hear about this, and no one liked this woman. She would frequently stop by the theater, often loitering for hours since she didn't have a job to go to. Any job that she did get, she couldn't hold down for very long. And since her dad owned the place, she felt like she could boss everyone around and run off to daddy if any of us snapped at her. Eventually, he got tired of just giving her money when she asked, so the job was an attempt to have her earn any money he gave her. And since she was about 20 years older than the average employee and the theater, she stuck out like a sore thumb. Thankfully, he knew better than to put her in management position or everyone would have walked out. She was ultimately regulated to the box office where she could stay out of the way of the rest of the staff. She was called by the staff a wide variety of names. Some of the nicer ones included the Beast, the Troll, the Banshee, the Wicked Witch of the box office, or just plain Satan. Her wrath wasn't just limited to the staff. We had unwritten rule at the theater that immediate family was allowed to come in to catch a movie at any time. This didn't stop her from going off on family members that came in, particularly the dad of one co-worker she didn't like. She would often snap at this poor guy who was generally very good-natured and friendly with everyone. She would then later drop resumes at his wife's law firm for paralegal positions, which was supposedly her forte. The co-worker's dad said she would have gotten that job had she not been so rude to him. There would be times she would manage to land a paralegal position somewhere and she would still come in to work the theater on weekends. This may have been the one smart move on her part because she would barely last a month before she would get fired. One time I remember a law firm threatened to sue her if she kept calling one of the employees after they let her go. On one particular Saturday, we had been gravely understaffed. Two people had called down that day, leaving us scrambling to try and get through the wave of people that kept coming in. Normally, I worked as an usher, but unfortunately, on this day, I was stuck in a box with the owner's daughter because I could knock out a long line rather quickly. As I was quiet and had a relatively long fuse, I was one of the few people who could work a shift with her without being on the verge of strangling her. With how the day had been going, everyone was on edge. Me, especially since I was stuck working a double to help cover one of the people who called out. When the crowds finally died down and the lobby had been straightened up, a couple of employees stepped outside for a smoke break, inadvertently invoking the wrath of the owner's daughter, snapping at them as they were heading out of the door. I turned to her and just said, Look, it's been a long day for all of us, please lay off. She then looks at me and comments on everyone's so-called lack of performance. To this day, the exchange between the two of us is a bit of a blur to me now, as it has been a few years and my anger began building as she continued to be snippy, but the next thing I knew, I was shouting at her, screw you, and proceeded to storm out of the box. Was everyone out in the lobby having heard it and are now staring at me with their jaws on the floor as many have never heard me snap like that, let alone at her. I went upstairs to the manager's office so angry that I was visibly shaking. Even the manager was stunned to see this. He proceeded to get on the phone and call the owner about his daughter. The owner said he was going to have a talk with her the next day. We figured she was going to try and throw us under the bus, so I and another employee volunteered to stay until midnight and do a thorough clean-up job for both the kitchen and the lobby. The staff would usually be out the door by 10.30 or 11 at the latest. But by the time we were both done, the place was spotless. The next day, the owner comes in with his daughter not too far behind as they both go up to his office to talk. They were both up there for about an hour, leaving us all to wonder what was going on. Eventually, we saw his daughter storm down the stairs and out the door without saying a word to anyone. She had been suspended for two weeks. I never even got so much as a slap on her wrist, although they did try to enforce a rule about using profanity in the lobby. My bad. 
When she was allowed back, she was clearly still mad at me as she gave me this silent treatment for an additional two weeks. It never crossed her mind that I didn't want her talking to me either. I eventually quit when I found a better paying job. The manager later told me that the owner was forced to fire his own daughter because she could not get along with the staff and was trying to take it out on the mother of another employee. The mother complained to the owner casually mentioning this level of harassment could lead to a lawsuit. She would still stop in regularly though to catch a movie and get free concessions. That however came to a halt when the owner sold the theater. Last I heard she had been living with her older sister I was kicked out when she yelled at the nanny. And the nanny recorded it. Why didn't we think to do that? Uh, I currently work for a firm myself and I keep a wary eye out whenever they say they are looking to hire paralegals. I work a part time as a Canadian Reserve soldier. This means training once in this means training once a night per week and two weekend exercises per month. I just got back from what I would consider to be one of the more challenging exercises I've been on. A three kilometer rock marsh from the bus drop off point to our training field, sleeping in hooches out the negative degree weather section and platoon attack drills a night navigation and patrol training. Needless to say, I'm beat. After a weekend of army food and rations, I wanted a decent burger in my gut. A good friend and former classmate we will call Darren works at his father's little burger shop. It's a quaint hole in a wall situation but his dad hand makes the burgers from scratch and they are the best burgers I've ever had. Today was particularly slow for the shop, little to no customers except for the lunch hour. Darren invited me back to the workers lounge behind the counter to eat and chat about the weekend. The lounge was invisible from the main entrance but is in full view once you reach the counter. This is relevant information. Halfway through my burger, a father and his two daughters walked in. Father says, Hello, is there anyone here? The sign said you guys were open. Darren popped around the corner from the lounge. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just in the bank there. What can I get you? I'll have your double bacon maza burger with a side of fries. And the kids will each have a kitty cheesy. Eat in, please. Sure thing, sir. Your total is $16.67 and your order should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Really? That's a little bit long for some burgers and fries. Maybe if you got your coworker there to help you, you'll be done sooner. He gestures at me in a lounge. They're in preparing the man's order. Oh no, he's not. But the father cuts him off to yell at me. Hey bot, you got a paying customer out here. I just stare out at him. Midburger munch, totally confused. Darren interjects. Sir, he doesn't work here. He's just a close friend having a visit. Uh-huh. I know how you food workers cover each other. Don't take me for a fool. Then he says back to me. You gonna come out and help your buddy? Me and my daughters are starving over here. I put my food down, walk over and reiterate Darren's point. Really, sir, I don't work here. I ain't no burger jockey. I'm a paying customer too. I don't even think I'm qualified to make food for you to eat. Seriously? You're pathetic. Can't come off your break to just make one measly order. Absolutely lazy. Darren throws down a big brown bag on top of the counter in front of the dad. Order up to go. Sir, you're acting inappropriate to my friend and in front of your children. Please take your food and leave. But I ordered to eat in. Yeah, but frankly you made a jerk out of yourself. And I'd much rather not have you in my establishment. Please leave. The man swiped the bag and stormed out. Kids in tow, mouthing off about slow and rude service. Ironic. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.